Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. The Department of Home Affairs and National Security discusses critical security matters with French counterparts. Public health surveillance systems at the borders are strengthened. The effectiveness of the community after school program is being enhanced. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Issues relating to maritime security, extraditions, human and drug trafficking, natural disasters, risk management, and the promotion of judicial cooperation form the core of discussions at the seventh session of the Franco St. Lucia Joint Security Committee Tuesday. The Department of Home Affairs and National Security hosted the event. The Franco St. Lucia Joint Security Committee seeks to review security matters arising out of the exchange between the Republic of France and St. Lucia. These matters include mutual legal assistance, security at sea, enhancing the marine unit, surveillance, sharing of intelligence, and training of security officers. A delegation from both parties met on Tuesday for the seventh session of the joint security meeting. Minister for Home Affairs, Justice, and National Security, Senator Herman Gil Francis, says these concerns have been a topic of discussion for the past 15 years. This security conference represents the continuation of close ties and vibrant relationships between the two countries. And may I add very early that Matnik has been a very good neighbor to us. Through thick and thin, the French government has been responsive, interactive, and supportive, be it on security matters, cultural, medical, educational, and technical cooperation. However, against this backdrop, backdrop, we are here to ensure that our law enforcement issues are addressed efficiently and innovatively so that our borders and our people are safe. We have to seriously improve the pace of our follow-up actions. The Ambassador of France in St. Lucia, His Excellency, Philippe Ardenas, is optimistic that there would be progress following recommendations from previous meetings held by the committee. As you know, we are uh, neighbors between uh, uh, Martinique and, uh, and St. Lucia. And as neighbors, we share the, the same uh, problems about, uh, about security, also problems about safety. Should we have a hurricane, for instance, we need to be able to, to work uh, closer together to have good co coordination so it's at the same time safety and uh, and security and uh, we need to uh, to face the same threats uh, illegal immigration uh, terrorism that could uh, that, that could happen uh, drug trafficking so uh, if we work together i think we we can do uh, we can do better also forming part of the meeting were members of the French Parliament. The parliamentarians are hoping for further collaboration between the French and the Caribbean on not only matters of security, but health and the environment. It's better to be together uh, rather than to be alone. It's not possible alone to make something good about the uh, environment, but uh, together it's, uh, it's uh, a lot of better a lot of projects together. Yeah, Be Beranger said the most important thing, <laughs> really, because <laughs> in front of the climate change, you, the little states, you are um, the, the f you you will be the first victims, and uh, us we are um, very far from uh, this problem, and we know that uh, it's here in the overseas that we can uh, really uh, fight against the climate change. The Franco San Lucia Joint Security Committee was born out of a memorandum of understanding between the government of St. Lucia and the French in 2004. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing on its mandate to strengthen its public health surveillance systems through capacity building training for workers at the ports and airports. More on this report from Fidel Neptune. The port health surveillance training was aimed at building the capacity of participants to detect, assess and respond to any health threats at the various ports of entry in St. Lucia. Senior Environmental Health Officer for Port Health, Karen Joseph, says this training is extremely important and will enhance the knowledge and skills of workers at the ports and airports. 
Some of the areas that were, that were broadly looked at was international health regulations, which of course governs so many aspects of um, port health surveillance. We also looked at disease surveillance. We also looked at um, public health emergencies at your ports of entries and how you deal with scenarios like that. And of course, we have a, an upcoming cruise season, so we wanted to make sure that everyone is prepared and on board and knows, know their roles so they can fulfill their functions at the varying ports of entry. Karen Joseph says she's very pleased with the training as it is expected to increase the competencies of the participants on ways to limit the spread of public health risk. Well, we're hoping from this workshop, everyone will know their roles at um, our ports of entry, what they need to do in terms of, you know, health security at the ports of entry. And we're hoping that, you know, overall, it would strengthen our borders and make things much safer um, at our ports of entry. The participants of the workshop included representatives from Immigration Department, Customs Department, SLASPA, Fire Department, Marine Police, and Shipping Agencies. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Funnel Neptune. The Department of Economic Development, Transport and Civil Aviation and a team from Climate Analytics spearheaded the validation exercise for St. Lucia's Country Program for the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund is a unique global platform established to respond to climate change by investing in low emission and climate resilient development. Glenn Simon reports. Stakeholders from across multiple government agencies, the private sector and civil society organizations met at the Bay Gardens Hotel Conference Room on October 31, 2019 to validate St. Lucia's country program for the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund, CGF, is a new global fund created to support the efforts of developing countries to respond to the challenge of climate change. Yeah. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Economic so Development, Transport and I Civil Aviation, so Claudius it's... Emmanuel, noted that collectively, Small island developing states, SIDS, contribute negligibly to climate change, contributing only about 1% of total carbon emissions. Against this backdrop, adaptation measures are critical to SIDS, especially for the agriculture and fisheries sectors, coastal marine ecosystem, water resources, as well as the infrastructure and health sectors. It is therefore a moral imperative that financial resources for both climate adaptation and mitigation are made available to SIDS on terms and conditions that take account of their peculiarities. Emmanuel stated that via the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNCCF, climate financing of 100 billion US dollars is made available annually. This financing is channeled through the Green Climate Fund to benefit 129 of the world's most vulnerable countries. In addition to the fact that adaptation needs far exceed the financial commitment made thus far, there is strong competition to access and use the available climate funding, both among and within countries. As such, it is vitally important that St. Lucia adopts an aggressive and proactive posture towards accessing available climate-related funds, such as the Green Climate Fund. Chief Economist in the Department of Economic Development, Tommy Descartes, stated that his department is the National Designated Authority, NDA, to the Green Climate Fund and serves as the lead liaison between the fund and stakeholders. Um, and so essentially the, the department is the one who will be providing no objection for any projects that are submitted, will be given strategic oversight to the overall um, engagement with the, with the G GCF. Among the requirements to access funding from the GCF, is the development of a country program which clearly articulates how the country will engage the GCF based on the strategic priorities developed from robust stakeholder engagement. Um, now we are almost completed and we think it was necessary to bring everybody here to validate um, what was presented in April. And so the, the hope is that we will get robust feedback from the stakeholders um, and we will then refine the document to reflect that. Climate analytics were contracted under the Green Climate Fund Readiness and Preparatory Support Program to build the institutional capacity of the NDA and key stakeholders, as well as to develop the country program for St. Lucia. Climate Analytics is a global non-profit organization that provides climate science research and policy advice. 
Frances Fuller, Deputy Director and Implementation Specialist with Climate Analytics, outlined some of the priority projects which emerged from the wide-ranging stakeholder consultations. Um, some of the main, main aspects are around resilience fishery sectors, um, smart hospitals, uh, green schools, um, e-mobility, electric mobility, we're trying to push that forward. So there's there's a pretty good cross-section of um, of activities, of, of focus areas, I guess. And, and so we do hope that it is, is somewhat representative of all the priorities that are outlined in the policy documents, but then also to address some of the, the key um, concerns from the stakeholders at the community level. St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan identified three main conditions that affect the island's vulnerability to climate change, namely its small geographical area. It's also one of the world's highest risk locations to tropical cyclones and its dependency on a few sources of income. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Ambassador-designate of the Argentine Republic to St. Lucia has presented his letters of credence to the Governor-General of St. Lucia, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack. St. Lucia and Argentina have enjoyed diplomatic relations since 1979. Ambassador-designate of the Argentine Republic to St. Lucia, Gustavo Daniel Martinez Pandiani, hopes to continue to cultivate cooperation between the two countries. Our bilateral relation is strong and has a rich history already. However, I truly believe, Your Excellency, that we can do more to reciprocally benefit from our expertise and experiences. For that purpose, I had been having a very productive conversation with the authorities of the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Agriculture, Health and Sports in order to put together new bilateral cooperation projects. As you know, Argentina is mainly an agricultural country. We have a vast knowledge of beekeeping and honey production. This is why we are proposing to bring the innovative Apicaribe projects to St. Lucia. Governor General, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack stated that St. Lucia and Argentina have many common interests from which they can mutually benefit based on their different experiences and expertise. With the vast resources at her disposal, Argentina has made a fine name for herself in agriculture, health and sports. And as the third largest exporter of natural honey, and given the milk derived from her countless cattle, she fits the biblical notion of a land flowing with milk and honey. Doesn't she? How more blessed could a nation be? Your dream and mission to bring our peoples together should not be difficult. For we both embrace democracy the presentation of credentials by the Ambassador-Designate of Argentina to St. Lucia took place on Tuesday, November 5th, 2019. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the Secretariat of the organization, a grouping of officials headed by a Director General, mandated to implement the decisions of the governments, but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. There are the commissioners from each member state who, along with the Director General, form the commission that oversees the work programs. There are also technical divisions with specialized units between them, as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past, and together, 
we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The government of St. Lucia, through the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, made a donation of a brand new vehicle to champion female high jumper Laverne Spencer on Tuesday morning in recognition of her outstanding representation of the island locally, regionally and internationally. Yeah. The government of St. Lucia, through the Ministry of Youth yeah. Development yeah. and Sports, made a donation of a brand new vehicle to champion female high jumper Laverne Spencer on Tuesday morning in recognition of her outstanding representation of the island locally, regionally and internationally. Tuesday's presentation took place at the Mindu Phillip Park and was attended by officials and staff of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, well wishers, sponsors and the media. Today we present Laverne with a clear spotage in recognition of her long-standing service to sports in St. Lucia. St. Lucia appreciates your dedication and consistency of service which you, Laverne, have provided in your chosen field of representation, which is athletics. We appreciate the high moral standards which, we, which you have maintained in representing us. Larry Bain is a director of Northwest Limited, and he said his company was proud to be a part sponsor of the vehicle, as Spencer exemplifies many of the attributes that his company embraces. Laverne Spencer has demonstrated to the world what dedication, discipline, and determination can achieve. But more importantly, Laverne has shown every young St. Lucian, particularly every little girl with a big dream, that if they truly focus and put in the hard work, they too can realize anything. Laverne started out just as Kia had, as the un unknown, the underdog, contending with more experienced competitors, with greater resources, and just like Kia, with persistence, perseverance, and passion, Laverne has risen to be measured against the very best in the world. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, congratulated Spencer on her outstanding career in female high jump and emphasized that she continues to inspire young upcoming athletes in St. Lucia with her focus, determination and consistency. You have been and continue to be our shining light. Your dedication, humility, perseverance, and ethos epitomizes the characteristics that all St. Lucians must aspire to for St. Lucia to shine. As such, our presentation of this vehicle to you is a small token of our appreciation for your example to this nation. And let me add that you earned it all, every bit of it. In accepting her new vehicle, Spencer was thankful for the continued recognition of her success in the field of athletics and female high jumping. Thank you. It's probably now will be one of my favorite brands and um, I know it has a lot of features when I came to Northwest. When I came to Northwest, you know, I got a thorough description and explanation everything of the car. So I really like it and I look forward to driving around car streets and everywhere with it and hopefully, you know, <laughs> advertise Kia. Um, um, I think it's a great car and I really like it. Spencer's Ooh. dominance in women's high jump Two, has led to her three. being named as a sporting Woo! ambassador for St. Lucia. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien reporting. Before we leave you, Tuesday was semi-final action day in the Interschool's Under-19 basketball competition. Contested in the semi, St. Mary's College met Sufre Comprehensive, whilst the Arthur Lewis Community College were up against Castries Comprehensive Secondary School. Finals and third place playoff set for Thursday, November 7th. 
And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The effectiveness of the community after-school program is being enhanced by the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. Chevron Marius tells us more. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment held a one-day workshop at the Chateau Heritage in Denry on Thursday, October 31st, 2019. The agenda of the workshop was to sensitize life skill facilitators of the community after-school program CASP on various ways to deal with the growing challenges of childcare at the various centers. Workshop facilitator Virginia Joseph stated that the training will focus on child behavior. What we realized with the after school, one of the, the most important um, area with that is um, behavior modification. And um, so we felt it was important that the life skill or social skill facilitators um, receive some training to improve on the sort of the interventions. Um, a lot, a lot of the, the centers, what we have noticed, there's a lot of uh, children with lack like social skills, um, and you see this, this display behavior through aggression, through bullying. Um, a lot of the times they do not know how to, to interact with each other, so they lack interpersonal skills, um, communication skills, um, things. So you see a lot of these things actually at the centers. So today we, what, what the training is about is like um, we're going to highlight as how to, how to find out those, those skills that they lacked and what are the best interventions. The participants engaged in discussion, group activities, and examined various issues at the centers. Some of the issues we face are children are struggling to communicate effectively. Um, they, they adopt the cultures that they see happening at home and even the, those that they see that or their peers portray. Um, so far, that we've done to underst like understanding what social skills are and getting to know more about social skills and also in, um, getting the views from our peers of how they deal with those issues at their centre. So in hopefully the strategies that they share will assist us in implementing those strategies at our centre to mitigate those issues. The Community After School Programme CASP Coordinator Antonia Marius stated that due to this workshop, CASP facilitators are better placed to examine behavioral issues and plan intervention solutions. Life skill is one of the integral um, courses for the after school program. So we want to ensure that the facilitators have all they need. And so that workshop is more or less to just help them develop the, the skills that they already have. Well, most of them, the challenges, especially for the life skills, because it's life skills we have actually, most of them is of how to deal with the behavioral issues of the children that they have. And that is what this workshop is mostly focused on. The community after school program runs from September 2018 to March 2020. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevre Marius. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Farmers Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle or Creole. If you have to do your own spray mix for Black Sigatoga treatment, always follow the recommended safety procedures. Always wear protective gear when handling or being exposed to the fungicide or other pesticides. Use only the fungicides recommended by the Black Sigatoka Management Unit when the treatment is due. The required quantity of the particular fungicide recommended must be mixed with spray oil and applied at a rate of 1.5 to 2 gallons per acre. Fungicides which are not recommended or applied at the wrong time or even when the spray treatment is not done effectively, can cause the fungus to become resistant to the chemical and therefore may no longer control the disease. Oil fungicide mix which has been stored for too long should not be used to treat black cigatoga disease. If carried out, such treatments may not be effective and can lead to poor control of the disease. Remember, before each chemical treatment for black cigatoga disease on your farm, first, the oil fungicide mix must be reagitated immediately before application. For more information on how to treat and control black cigatoka on your farm or in your backyard garden, contact the Black Cigatoka Management Unit at 451-5491, 451-5894, 451-5894.
or email bpmu at candw.lc. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the International Cooperation and Development Fund of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Cuyon. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, Department qui n'est pas responsable pour information en gouvernement cette fois-ci, GIS, à ce moment puis télévision nationale puis à NTN, Capoeiro, Nouvelle Acquiol, Capoeiro, Primus Hutchinson. Plus que yon mille jeunes qui trouvent bénéfice à des projets pour développer capacité, pour trouver employement et pour aussi recevoir certifié un projet Sky. Sky c'est un projet qui est développé par le gouvernement de l'Angleterre pour ajouter un développement sostenable à cette ici avec l'autre petit pays à Caribla comme la Grenade, Dominique, avec ses versants et la Grenade. Et Nelio, ça c'est un programme en ministère de l'Éducation qui a établi pour faciliter et aider les jeunes qui démontrent l'avantage pour trouver une bonne éducation. Le programme ça là, qui a dit pour que ça suive étonnement, en face de ça là, j'ai établi un arrangement pour sélectionner les jeunes qui sont intéressés pour suivre sept programmes en bas organisation ça là. Projet qui a placé attention à ceux les jeunes qui ont l'âge 15 pour toute l'année et aussi yo qui pas ni manœuvre pour aider quoi yo. Coordinateur pour projet Sky en cette ci ça c'est Lendel Archibald déclaré que yo ka pour étonnement pour plus que 6000 jeunes pour ça trouver certifié pour trouver emploi. Selon madame Archibald projet ni attention pour étonner à peu près 1,154 jeunes pour yon l'autre trois ans pour venir. C'est un étonnement qui est fait en trois ans. Côté 304 jeunes qui ont trouvé étonnement en première année, 400 en deuxième année et en l'autre 400 en troisième année. Officier des affaires éducation, Sherry and Julian, explique que le programme qui a étonné ces jeunes là pour apprendre l'état des affaires techniques et aussi manière pour apprendre à vivre la vie au primaire. Il a ajouté que le programme a instruit pour lire et écrire et aussi pour apprendre à compter. Il a aussi été placé en divers établissements business et après le programme, il a reçu un certificat CVQ. Plus que 30% de la jeune fille et 30% de la jeune garçon, pendant 12% de la jeune qui est Le programme a une en opération au Liban. C'est ainsi. Il y a une délégation de 20 officiers de l'école de ce pays antillais français qui ont une visitation officielle pour celle-ci récemment. Pour ça, c'est pour essayer un argument de bonne comprendre un effort pour former un gymnase entre l'école française et ce pays français, à Caribla, et celle-ci. L'objectif de l'initiative, c'est pour finaliser et improuver à ce échange qui a déjà existé à cette école. Le Conseil général pour Martinique, Guadeloupe et Cayenne, Johanna Salto, notez que vous avez choisi un officier pour une communication et puis ce pays-là. Salto, vous remarquez que le plan Salah, qui travaille à bénéfice de ce pays-là, et qui a ajouté que l'année plan pour cette ici instruit ses étudiants Martinique en sport cricket pendant les étudiants à cette ici, car ils ont assisté à l'université à Martinique, plutôt qu'ils ont voyagé pour l'Angleterre et la France. Il a dit aussi que les Français ont ni l'intérêt pour apprendre le langage anglais. Même quand les étudiants sont ici, intéressés pour apprendre à parler français. Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasny parlait de significance de ce pays-là en façon qui est très prévenue à l'autre et par conséquence qui a porté autant à l'occasion pour les étudiants ni en cette ici et Martinique. Selon le Premier ministre Chasny, ça a représenté une grande occasion pour ni les étudiants Martinique et cette ici pour apprendre la culture de l'autre et pour célébrer la fête de l'autre. En parlant de ça, chef officier d'éducation, c'est aussi Fiona Meyer, qui a fait valer le langage créole en effort pour les gymnages entre pays et les pays français et les pays français. Il fait référence principalement pour l'importance créole pour la communication, particulièrement la mathématique, et pour mailler ce langage-là, anglais, français et créole. Madame Meyer a renforcé la signification de la collaboration. Ce pays a, en ces différentes manières, sa caille portée 
bénéfice. Ça nous voulait faire, Jordi, nous voulait dire, nous, tout barré à bot nous, c'est même. L'année est différente, oui, mais nous n'avons pas gardé pour qui ça qui même à bot nous. Nous savons l'engagement, ça a un petit problème pour le monde, mais nous voulons dire, Jordi, nous voulons que nous apprenions le français. Nous voulons que nous apprenions l'anglais. Parce que, ensemble, nous savons. Nous trois pouvons. Nous 15 minutes. Là, on prend un avion 15 minutes ou jamais Martinique ou ça a été Gozile ou Martinique. So, nous voulons encourager ce moment-là avec aussi ces dix fois madame, monsieur qui est dans l'école là. Nous n'y pouvons pas, nous n'y dit pas monde pour dire, nous n'y pouvons embrasser, nous n'y pouvons garder manière, nous savons travailler ensemble pour garder, pour assurer ce moment-là, nous savons prendre le langage, nous savons prendre le langage là. Et puis, nous avons un bon temps. Nous avons Connect yon à l'autre aussi, avec manière cela, yon kaye continue pour um, pou travailler ensemble pour faire ça succès. Et content, hod, chef officier d'éducation à cette fois-ci, Madame Fiona Meyer, c'est comme ça nous avons trois bout de nouvelles nou pour aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour aujourd'hui, puis je vous considère que vous avez la vie. Je vous remercie pour nouvelle à Koyol. Après ça, je vous remercie pour cette niche. Merci on Peel Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy skies become increasingly cloudy with some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms, mainly over the southern Windward Islands. Over the rest of the region, it will be generally fair, occasionally becoming cloudy with a few showers. A tropical wave located just east of the southern Windward Islands will cause cloudiness, showers and isolated thunderstorms mainly over the southern part of our region during the next 24 hours. A second tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 23 miles per hour or 37 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 4.35 p.m. and will be high again at 10.52 p.m. The tide for Vieux Bay was high at 12.43 p.m. and is low at present. The seas locally rough with waves and northeasterly swells 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Wednesday at 6 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Trost.